right, hello everyone. I wanna thank you for coming to my talk. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, this will be automate your accessibility using accessibility. I am Andrew Moore. I'm an engineer at Launch Scout. Uh, you might have seen some of my coworkers around. Um, we are a software agency. We like to build things in Elixir if we can, um, but we'll, we do other stuff too. Um, there's my uh, GitHub. Uh, I go by less than 70, most everywhere online. Um, I'll kind of explain why at the end. And then, uh, yeah, there's my email. If anyone wants to get a hold of me, feel free. Um, so first I thought we'd start by talking about what even is accessibility. Um, so the big thing that we have to worry about is this thing called the WCAG. Um, that stands for the Web Content Accessibility Group. It's like a set of standards, kind of like building codes for your website, um, just kind of how it should operate. Uh, we also have Section 508 compliance. That's uh, if you need it, you probably know. It's more generally a government thing. Uh, but it also includes things like um, screen readers. Uh, that's what most everyone jumps to when they first hear of accessibility. But there's more things to consider, like we also have all, um, all kinds of different alternative input-output devices. Some people use uh, braille readers or just all different kinds of ways to access the web. Um, some people are paralyzed. They have these little things that they move their tongue. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, we've also got things like captions for audio for people who uh, are hard of hearing. And we also want to make sure we have intentional, uh, thoughtful, hierarchical navigation. Um, and also, we want to make sure that our design is as simple as the problem allows. Uh, so I thought we could focus in on the WCAG compliance a little bit. Uh, there's three levels. There's A, AA, and AAA. A is kind of the bare minimum that you need to hit. Uh, AA is recommended, and then AAA is like, you know, very thorough. Uh, and they, it's a big giant set of rules. There's thousands of them, but they fall into four broad categories. We've got perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. So if you remember the acronym POR, that might help you out. Um, Perceivable is things like, are our links in different orders on different pages? Do things jump around? Uh, we've got, like, are there a mixture of languages on the page or extra jargon that isn't explained? Um, we want to make sure that the foreground content is separated from the background content. Uh, operable is probably what most people think of when they hear accessibility. That's things like, can we use our app with just a keyboard? Or uh, make sure that we're not blinking things around and causing people to have seizures and stuff like that. Uh, understandable, it needs to have, like I said, as simple of language as possible and, um, and be predictable, because it's not fun when you're already struggling to use something, and it's acting in very weird ways. And then we also have robust. Um, we should make sure that our app works in all different kinds of browsers, all different kinds of OSs. Uh, some people have very particular accessibility preferences that aren't replicable in one environment, so we have to make sure that they're able to access our app, too. Um, so yeah, basically, we want to not put up roadblocks in front of our users. Uh, Things like missing or incorrect alt tags for images. Uh, if you don't have a monitor, you can't see, then an image isn't much good for you. So the alt text kind of describes what it's for. Uh, we've got in inaccessible forms. That's another big one. Uh, things need to be labeled and named properly so that the screen readers and things can pick them up. Uh, we've got things like poor color contrast. That's a big one. Um, and, and like I mentioned, inaccessible navigation. If it's just weird or changing or the hierarchy doesn't make sense, it's not exactly helpful. Um, so at Launch Scout, we wanted to kind of do something. Our designers did very manual accessibility checking, but we wanted a way to kind of automate it. We explored a lot of different approaches around kind of a hands-off approach. 
um, just check everything all the time. And it was not exactly the most ideal way to tackle the problem, so we came up with this library called Accessibility. Um, and basically what it does is it ties a JavaScript tool called Pally to your XUnit, Wallaby, and LiveView tests. Um, you can give it anything, and what you end up with is uh, basically a snapshot of the DOM at whatever moment in time during your test. Uh, it gives you control over what to test and when, instead of testing the same page eight million ways by some automated approach, we can kind of be more methodical. Um, and you can uh, use it both locally and in CI, so you can have your uh, CI pipeline fail if you have accessibility problems, if you desire. Um, so yeah, basically how do I use it? Um, we've got, it's basically just a macro. When you use accessibility, you get an HTML snapshot function. Um, like I said, you can pass it basically anything. Um, if you're in a Wallaby test, you can give it the session. If you're in like a controller test, you can give it the Phoenix con. If you're in a live view test, you can give it the view or an element. Um, and like I said, what you end up with is a snapshot of what your DOM would be. Uh, so it does some magic behind the scenes to tie in your asset pipeline and things like that so you get the right styles also. Um, and then the other half of it is a mixed task that when you, you run your tests, you generate your snapshots, and then at the end of your test run, you run this mixed task and it'll pass all those snapshots to that Pally tool and it will um, check them for some common accessibility fails. Uh, so let's see if we can get an example of how to use this. I've got, uh, if I can pull it up. So basically wrote this little simplified form. Here, so yeah, we've got just email name, pretty standard stuff. And if I come over to my terminal, that's not what I meant to do. So I'm going to go into the repo for that app there, and I'm going to run mix test. Actually, I'm going to make sure I'm on the right branch. If I run mix test, and I'll do this one where you can see it. If I run mix accessibility after my test run, we will see a big old fail. Oh, I understand. So we have to run it in the mix test in, uh, mix test environment, and then we'll get what we hope for. We should see a big list of fails. It looks super complicated, but it will tell you basically the exact WCAG rule that is failing. You'll get a selector of which element is causing the fail, and sometimes you'll even get like a recommended fix. It'll say, use this background color or whatever instead. Uh, so what I have done is... So we saw that uh, there was a bunch of uh, color contrast failures. We had some uh, a missing alt text on our image. Uh, so what I did was I went in and fixed all of that stuff. So we've got a commit there, fixing some colors, fixing some link styling. And then now when we run our 
mix task. It should come back clean. And of course it doesn't. Oh, I understand why. Sorry, uh, I have to delete the old snapshots and regenerate them. So if I do mix test again. Accessibility. Cool, and you'll see, yeah, no issues found. So if we refresh our page, it should look a little easier to perceive. So yeah, that is basically that. Um, so what else do we need to do? Uh, an automated tool isn't gonna catch everything. Uh, so one of the most important things that we can do is conduct user testing. If you can get your application in front of an actual, uh, sorry, I'm, there we go. If you can get your application in front of actual users with these problems. You're gonna learn a lot more than you ever would by any automated tool. Um, make sure that we're using plain language. That's another one that this isn't gonna catch. Um, it's, it does some, <clears throat> does some looking for like certain abbreviations if you're not uh, explaining what they are, it will catch that, but complex language, jargon, that kind of stuff, we always just need to be on the lookout for. Um, and prioritize usability, um, this kind of stuff generally makes the app better for everyone. It's, um, it's just you know using standard HTML tags, making sure things have the right structure. That, that kind of stuff doesn't just benefit people with disabilities. It's just better for everyone. And uh, yeah, like I said, just um, design with empathy and understanding in mind mostly. Um, I told you I would tell you why I'm less than 70 everywhere. Uh, I actually, it's a little known fact, but 70% of people that have a visual disability are unemployed. It's like exceptionally difficult to get around and work and do stuff. Um, I am actually in the lucky 30%. I have a degenerative eye condition. So I like to think that things like this and just designing with a little more understanding in mind can lower that number a little bit. Uh, I think that's all I have. Um, We've got a link there to, uh, we really want to see Elixir take off. So if you could fill out our Elixir adoption survey, that's the one on the left. And then uh, we're actually working on a guide for accessibility testing. Uh, if you go to that one on the right, you can fill out a form for us and uh, be notified when that comes out. Thank you. <laughs>